All right. Yes. Uh, greetings, each one of you. Uh, it's such a joy to be back together with you to study God's word. And um, this particular course that we are going to be doing is called uh, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. Um, so we will talk more about the power of God in and through our lives. Uh, let's pray and uh, get started. I'll just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your faithfulness, your goodness in our lives. Father, we know that, Lord, we uh, are being equipped, O oh Lord, line upon line, precept upon precept. We pray that, uh, Lord, you will help us deepen our understanding and also, Lord, live out these truths, Lord, that uh, we, we are learning about. Father, we commit ourselves completely into your hands. Father, I pray for you know, each one on this course, Lord, and every listener that they will be blessed, Father God, through this uh, particular course. And Lord, we commit the details, even the technical details, Lord, uh, into your hands. And we ask, Lord, for uh, your blessing. We, we uh, pray that there will be no hindrance, Father. We thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, we can get started. Uh, I am just looking at the list of students here and really happy to see uh, so many of us from the first year. Uh, are you able to view clearly and also listen properly? Just need a confirmation from all of you. If you're comfortable, uh, kindly post on the chat and let me know. Uh, the arrangement is working well. Okay. Glad. Yeah, it's all fine. Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, since this course is about supernatural ministry, we will talk a little bit about the supernatural power of God. Uh, and then we will move on to um, looking at the keys to flow in a supernatural ministry. So today's class is more of an introduction, and uh, I expect to have uh, interaction you know, with all of you and would love to hear your opinion. So we will try and answer some important questions. The first question which I want to ask us is, uh, why are, and I am, instead of using the term supernatural ministry, I will just say, you know, why are healings, miracles, um, deliverances, and the demonstration of the power of God in all these ways important? Okay, Why is it important? Why should we talk about it? Why should we desire to flow in these things? So this is the question which we are asking. So let me clarify. Now, when I say healing, healing refers to... Um, uh, there's an ailment, a sickness, or a condition which is set right by the power of God. It could be something that happens in a, a moment or takes a little bit of time, but you know, it it happens that there is a, a recovery which was not because of any other reason but by the power of God. So when I say deliverance, it means the people being set free from the uh, work of Satan and demonic powers. So when I say miracles, miracle is uh, something that, you know, let's say, I'll just give you an example. Uh, maybe there's metal in the body, which is already quite different. You know, naturally, we don't have metal in the body, but when surgeries take place, uh, broken bones are replaced with metals, or uh, if there is uh, an insertion of a particular device to help uh, a system in our body, then there would be uh, metal in our bodies. But uh, maybe through ministry uh, or the power of God, the presence of God, the metal disappears. Now, we would call that a miracle. Thing happened which is beyond our explanation, our understanding. So that would be a miracle. Uh, science, wonders, uh, science, wonders, these are all uh, things again that 
engage the supernatural power of God and demonstrate you know, how great God is. So when you consider things like Jesus walking on the water or Jesus multiplying food, uh, all these are, are amazing. These are miracles and you know, there, there are uh, all these signs and wonders that he performed. And we know the Bible continues to speak of that you know, in, our, in our lives as believers. Uh, we also need to be flowing in the supernatural. So supernatural uh, is uh, uh, an umbrella word for many of these things that I have just explained to us. So my question to us um, is why supernatural? Is it even needed? Do we even need to see uh, healings, deliverances, miracles, or is it not okay to just, you know, go on with life as it is, worshipping God? So what is your opinion? What is your view? Please feel free to share. Okay, so uh, Zeli has posted on the chat. She says, yes, uh, it's the Great Commission, Mark 16. 15 through 18, you know, where Jesus said, uh, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So he's calling us to go and make disciples, but also demonstrate his power you know, through all these healings. Miracles. So he himself wants us to flow in the supernatural. And it's quite obvious. Thank you, Zeli, for sharing that passage. Yes. So God has given us the Great Commission. And it involves the supernatural. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on. Sitkinu, I saw you raise your hand. Please go ahead. Ma'am, your question was like supernatural is needed or not? Like, ma'am, practically speaking, the human nature, we see, then we believe. Like Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. He came, he was raised again. But still, Thomas, St. Thomas, he was with Jesus. He told, when I will see Jesus, I will put my finger in his palm in, the, in that hole. Then I will believe that Jesus is alive. So, man, this gives us a proof that the being of human nature, when we see a supernatural thing is happening, then only we will believe. So that's why, according to me, supernatural is very much needed in the ministry. Okay, thank you, Sitkenu. So, um, uh, when we see the supernatural, it gives us more faith to believe God for other things. A very uh, uh, apt there. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, any more thoughts? Why supernatural? Do we need the supernatural? Okay, yes, Jatina, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think uh, since we are the children of God and we have to be like Jesus more in this life and Jesus was supernatural. He did the impossible things and before he went, he said, I give you the authority to heal, go and do supernatural things. So since we are his children, I think we have to do that and just follow Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Jafina. That's right. Uh, we follow the example of Jesus. And Jesus moved you know, with all these miracles, uh, healings uh, in and through his life. Um, uh, just this Sunday, we were sharing on Matthew chapter 8. And uh, Matthew chapter 8 is so interesting because it, it covers the healings of Jesus and the deliverance of Jesus uh, one after the other. And uh, it's it's like going through a day uh, in the life of Jesus. So he heals the leper. He uh, says that word of heal, speaks it over the centurion servant uh, who was healed. And then uh, later he visits Peter's home and his mother-in-law is sick. And she, uh, you know, he rebukes the fever. She's healed and she begins to minister to Jesus. So you notice it's just a day in the life of Jesus. And all these miracles are happening you know, as he's going about his normal life. Uh, when he's outside, healings took place. When he visited somebody's home, healings took place. And then the scriptures tell us when evening came, in the evening, many people brought their sick to them and he spoke a word and you know he, he cast out demons. So even in the evening, when Jesus is ministry, the uh, supernatural is so natural. It was part of his life. And uh, as Jafina rightly shared with us, uh, this is how Jesus was. And 
we are supposed to be like him right so the supernatural is important so let's continue on this thought. It's so nice to hear your views and opinions. So the question that I'm asking is, why supernatural? Why is the supernatural important for us as believers? Why is the supernatural important even in ministry? What do you think? Kindly add to uh, the list of uh, views that we already have. Can I say something? Yes, please, Isaac. Go ahead. Yes, um, we we know, and it's established that uh, our body is the temple of the Lord, and uh, we already we, all, we also know that sickness and ailment always come from most at most time from the devil. So we need the supernatural so that we can conquer the works of the devil, so that it cannot uh, pollute or destroy the temple that the Lord has built, which is our body. So we need the supernatural to engage the work of the devil, which is bring sickness, illness, and so on and so forth. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. So um, true. Thank you, Isaac. Um, so our bodies, you know, as Isaac shared, um, Sometimes we're afflicted by the works of the devil and to overcome that we need the supernatural because God's original intention is for us to be whole and well. That's how he created us. Uh, like even when we look back at creation, everything that God made, you know, it was good and that world was so perfect. There was no sickness when God created man. Because, thank you, Isaac. So the, we have to overcome the works of the, the devil in our body, in our health. So, good. That's true. Anything else? Kizeli is adding to uh, the, the thoughts. She's saying, through supernatural ministry, demonstrates the love of God, the power of God, and the glory of God. Correct, Kizeli. So, uh, uh, correct about that. When these things happen, Right? So miracles take place or just consider the, the Bible. Whenever Jesus did a healing, okay, let's take for example the leper in uh, Matthew chapter 8. Do you think the leper was, um, you know, oppressed by his condition? Most definitely. As a leper, we recognize that he would have um, suffered discomfort in his body. We also uh, understand that you know, leprosy, especially in those days, uh, was such a thing that people would be excommunicated or they would not have the um, like that the privilege of, of um, uh, being included in the society. Right. So that would have been. Uh, difficult for him to take mentally all right uh, and uh, of course you know so many other things when you're not together with your family uh, emotionally you suffer so he must have been going through so much and leprosy is also a debilitating disease uh, it progressively destroys you know, our, our uh, ability to do different things so the leper would have been in so much of distress and pain but when he comes to jesus and says jesus if you are willing you make me whole and jesus immediately looks at him he says okay no i am willing and the leper is cleansed right away just imagine with me how he must have felt because it not only restored his physical body but his life would have turned around from that point onwards he no longer would need to live in those leper colonies. He can come back. He can pursue the destiny that God has for him. So just this one incident reveals to us how God's love has ministered through that work of healing. So as Zeli is saying, uh, when God's power is demonstrated, you know, God's love is shown uh, for people. Uh, God's you know, care and compassion is shown for God's people, how God meets their needs at that very point in time. So 
many different examples we can see from scripture when he healed the, the centurion's servant. You know, the centurion would have been so encouraged by that. The servant, you know, once his body is healed, he would have uh, been encouraged and uh, wanted to know more about Jesus. So you see, the power of God is very much connected to the heart of God. And God shows his love, his compassion, his mercy, his goodness, you know, all of that through these supernatural works. Okay? Uh, so yes, Zell, you're, you're so right. The supernatural ministry, it demonstrates the love of God, power of God, and the glory of God. Glory of God is the greatness, how great God is when he performs these mighty miracles. So that's right. Uh, any other thoughts? Why is supernatural? Why is it important? Uh, yes, Anita, please go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, uh, through the supernatural, God reveals his nature, like he is Jehovah Rapha, and he heals and he uh, delivers us from everything. Like, through this, we can uh, really know who God is, like what he can do for us. Yeah, true, uh, Anita. So, God's nature is revealed you know, through the supernatural power of God. So there are many different names of God um, and he has already revealed to us that he's a healer, he's a provider, he's the God of peace, he's the God of righteousness, many things about himself. All of that is demonstrated when we see these supernatural works take place in our lives. Um, yeah, that's very true. So the nature of God is revealed. Okay, any other points, any other different points about the need for the supernatural? Would it be okay to not have the Okay, let me, let me ask uh, uh, a different question now. Uh, would it be fine to not see any demonstration of God's power and just carry on with knowing what Jesus did in the Bible? Can I say something? Yes, please. Yes, Isaac. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's, it should not be too okay to just yeah, live without the supernatural works uh, as demonstrated by Jesus Christ because he already said it and it has to be accomplished that if we believe in him, we can do great, greater and mighty works than he did. So I think... It's necessary that we manifest the supernatural to complement or accomplish the word that Jesus said because he already started and we as followers need to accomplish the mission that he has started. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you, Isaac. So it was Jesus who said that we will do greater works than these. Uh, so how can we not want the supernatural? Because it is the great commission that Jesus gave us and he said that we also must accomplish great things for uh, his name's sake and that he empowers us for it. So it, it's just part of the mandate. It's part of uh, the commissioning of the believer. So we cannot subtract the supernatural from our lives. Thank you, uh, Isaac. And I also see here uh, a comment by Rosaline. She says, when we operate in supernatural, we show God's power and also by it, souls are added into the kingdom of God. So uh, good, uh, Rosalie, that's right. Mm. The new point here is that people are saved. So when they uh, see God's supernatural power being demonstrated. So for all these reasons, we... Uh, we understand that the supernatural is so very important for the believers. You know, we we uh, would really be missing out on what God wants to do uh, in and through our uh, lives and in this generation. 
you know if we don't work with the demonstration of god's supernatural power so i've already uh, quickly shared you know what we mean by the supernatural healings and miracles and deliverance emotional healing signs wonders etc okay uh, now let me go over a couple of reasons which uh, some of them you have already enlisted but uh, i will uh, go over them again and these are available for us in uh, abc publication ministry healing and deliverance uh, the first chapter so there are eight uh, reasons that are listed there for the importance of the supernatural so the first one i'll enlist it and then go over each one briefly the first one is miracles healing and deliverance reveal the reality and the nature of god the second miracles reveal god's greatness third miracles demonstrate god's compassion miracles have a powerful effect on people especially on those who do not believe the importance jesus gave to miracles is the fifth one six the kingdom comes with power seven the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs eight miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural now we'll briefly look at uh, each one of these uh, if you have any more comments you know, as i'm sharing these uh, thoughts feel free to uh, sort of you know unmute yourselves and speak or put it on the chat so the first reason why the supernatural is important it reveals the reality and the nature of god so god has revealed himself as the healer um, in exodus 15 26 and he reiterated that you know, through um, through the times of moses uh, we also see that not only did he reveal himself as the healer but he did it in the lives of his people in fact psalms uh, it records that when god brought the people out right he brought them out of egypt there was none feeble among his tribes so this is the way in which god uh, touched the bodies of his own people even uh, in, in the old testament times because he said he is a healer he did the healing work uh, in the lives of the children of israel we recognize that what he does through the supernatural is what he is okay so it reveals to us who god has spoken of you know, of himself and uh, uh, you know and and um, that is demonstrated now we know that all this that god did in the old testament uh, jesus came to reveal the father he came to reveal the nature of god so jesus became the image of that invisible god for the old people under the old covenant they knew that god had uh, given them the covenant names and all that but jesus walked in it and people could look at jesus and say hey this is what father god would do when somebody is sick or when somebody is oppressed by the devil and so on and so forth so jesus became that image of the invisible god as it says in colossians 1:34 jesus is the express image as uh, hebrews 1:3 puts it of this god that we serve and his nature was revealed you know in all the things that jesus did and as we've all discussed already the life of jesus was marked by the supernatural now the second reason why uh, the supernatural is important is it reveals god's greatness okay somebody had mentioned earlier that people will know who god is now let us uh, look back at the time when jesus began his supernatural works and it was in the wedding of cana where the water was turned into wine and the scriptures tell us that he manifested his glory and the disciples and his disciples believed in him in john 2 11 so when the supernatural works take place you know we can all say that this cannot be done by man it has to be god and so it turns our heart 
towards the greatness of God. And, and that is another reason why the supernatural is so uh, important and God continues to uh, work these miracles in our midst. So it basically reveals the goodness of God. A man might say, this is not possible, that is not possible. I'm sure you know we've come across uh, some testimonies uh, where we hear it and we think, oh, I never thought something like this would happen. I never thought uh, that you know a healing of this sort is possible or a healing of somebody who's, who's critical and seems like they're sinking um, it is possible. How, how can this happen? But the word of God reminds us that nothing Thing is too hard for the Lord. If God has spoken it, if he has revealed it, if it is in the will of God, and we know that healing is, we will talk more about it as we go forward, uh, he is able to do it. Even what may be impossible for uh, people, he does it. And when the impossible takes place, you know, it turns our attention towards God and we say, wow, this is a great God uh, uh, that we are talking about. So the supernatural reveals the greatness of God. Uh, and the next point that I mentioned is uh, miracles demonstrate God's compassion. We, Many of us said that God's love is shown when these miracles happen. So I talked about the leper also. You see how God could understand the leper's need. Uh, and bring him out, you know, of that place of a bondage which the sickness kept him in. In the same way, there are many such uh, healings and miracles that we see uh, even through the life of Jesus. And in many parts of, of the Gospels, uh, it says that he was moved with compassion. Matthew 14, 14, where Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and he healed their sick. Okay? So this is how uh, uh, God ministered, Jesus ministered and Jesus did what the nature of the father is, isn't it? So compassion, his compassion. There was a lady whose son passed away and she was weeping. So Jesus goes and he raises the son from the dead. What does it show about Jesus? He cares for the, the lady. He cares for that young man who was raised from the dead. So his compassion is demonstrated. The disciples um, uh, uh, you know, was, were helping Jesus when he was ministering to the multitudes. Uh, and at one point, there was no food you know, after the preaching session. The multitudes are hungry. Why should God care about hungry people? But he does. So in him breaking the bread, and distributing it, you know, bread and, the, and, and multiplying the fish, we see the compassion of God because he cared about the hunger uh, that people were going through. So same thing, even in our times, we all have needs you know, and uh, people are going through uh, circumstances and situations where they want God's intervention. Miracles demonstrate God's compassion when a miracle happens. You know, people share, I, I really needed this money to study in that college. God made it happen. You know, and I, I really needed this breakthrough or an open door. God made it happen. What does it show? He cares about what we are going through. Uh, and miracles demonstrate God's compassion. What else? Uh, miracles have a powerful effect on people. Uh, and uh, uh, especially those who do not believe. So they get the attention of those people. Remember, we just said uh, in um, John chapter 2, when Jesus turned the water into wine, what happened? The disciples, they again, you know, were awakened to the fact that, wow, how can God do this? This is amazing. You know, it takes years for water to, I mean, Grape, uh, grape, and you know all those derivative, derivatives of uh, uh, grape for it to turn into wine. But here is Jesus turning water into wine, amazing, and so it really helps them. What does Scripture say? They believed. 
they believed in him so miracles have a way of getting people's attention they may not even be thinking about who god is but when these things happen you know people just wake up and they're like how did it happen you know it has to be god so uh, even in the life of jesus we see that people saw his works and multitudes followed him around why are they following him around you know in fact look 5:15 it says great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmity so they knew he could do this it got their attention and so they were following after jesus so miracles have a way of uh, drawing people's attention they cause people to also turn to god and another beautiful example is philip uh, in in the book of acts when he goes to samaria and all these miracles start taking place people start putting their faith in jesus you know it's like so many people start believing in jesus then another apostolic team is sent to uh, teach them about the baptism in the holy spirit so uh, you know these miracles will turn god's hearts towards uh, people's hearts towards god so that is uh, another reason why they are uh, important so now we can quickly look at some of the other reasons why just give me a moment Okay. So the next thing we said was um, that Jesus gave importance to the miracles. And uh, you remember when uh, John the Baptist had a doubt: Are you really the Messiah, uh, Jesus, uh, or is is there someone else you know, who needs to come? At that time, Jesus did you know all his works. His answer was he went and healed and delivered and did all of his works, and he told the the people. go and tell john what you saw so his answer was here i am flowing in signs wonders and miracles doesn't that testify of who i am so jesus himself uh, gave that testimony to um, john the baptist and he also spoke of the fact that if he didn't do the miracles then you know don't believe me that's the way jesus even talked and we have several scriptures and i would encourage you to look at these notes from um, uh, the publication you know, ministry healing and deliverance uh, chapter 1 so jesus gave importance to miracles uh, and if jesus gives importance to miracles then we do should give importance to them then the kingdom comes with power so this kingdom that we preach of we always see that the power of god needs to follow uh, and that's the way even about jesus when we could just talk about jesus uh, it, it tells us that he was attested by signs wonders and miracles so the life of jesus is preaching was attested his life was attested by the supernatural uh, and that also helps us recognize that uh, it is so important for us to move with these things that the gospel is supposed to be preached with accompanying signs early on uh, one of us uh, in the chat section we posted and we said uh, that jesus said you, know, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so he gave us the great commission but he also said that you are going to do these works these signs will follow those who believe so uh, it's supposed to follow us so the gospel is supposed to be preached with accompanying signs and miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural as uh, sitkin who pointed out when something happens you know, people believe god and you know, they expect more from god so uh, these are all the reasons right why the supernatural is so important now uh, the next question that i want to ask us is do you think you know there can be opposition uh when we believe in the supernatural and if there is why is there opposition when we talk about the supernatural and want to flow in the supernatural any any thoughts on that uh 
or in other words uh, uh, lack of acceptance people find it hard to accept the supernatural why why do you think so one reason could be there are a lot of counterfeit uh, miracles happening yeah that's very correct uh, john there's a lot of counterfeit meaning uh, the supernatural takes place um, you know even among those who don't necessarily believe in jesus okay so that's counterfeit uh, but what do you think john so if, if there is counterfeit then how do we approach this yeah so if counterfeit excess doesn't mean that original was not <laughs> this the example of the currency uh, if government has uh, seen that there is counterfeit 2000 rupees currency they won't withdraw all the 2000 rupees originals and, or it doesn't go invalid so that's that should be i think uh, even more way to um, do supernatural ministry in the right way so that it uh, proclaims the truth yeah wonderful john uh, so true isn't it just because the false exists uh, it's not that we must stop moving forward with the truth let the false exist we will move forward with the truth and uh, uh, you know let god's nature his power his glory be revealed through it. so just because there are counterfeit demonstrations of some supernatural power uh, we don't stop ministering the supernatural or believing god Even for ourselves we can believe god for the supernatural right uh, so yeah that's that's very true okay what else what are the other thoughts why do people find it difficult to accept the supernatural um i think people today are so much practical that they want to find a reason for everything from their own knowledge like they don't even believe that god created us they have a theory for us they say earth was created by big bang theory and we are created from monkey so they want to find everything from them and they are using their head and their knowledge and they think everything is science and everything is universe but they are more practical so they couldn't accept even god so they could not even accept the super natural things too yeah, yeah thanks stefina you know when we are you know, we want we are intellectual and we want to explain everything through logic uh, sometimes we don't have the words to explain the supernatural right and so then what happens people Uh, find it difficult to accept the supernatural as as you were saying uh, but you know we will talk about it later it's not that um, you know the supernatural contradicts science or the supernatural is uh, against science uh, but for now what i would say is we science is not able to explain everything okay and uh, uh, that doesn't mean that those things are not real the things that cannot be explained could be as real as the things that cannot be explained so we we'll leave it at that but we'll come back for a more discussion on it so yeah great thoughts uh, any other thoughts why we find it difficult to accept the supernatural i have one more uh, i don't know whether it is right to say this but some people feel that it's not real because it didn't happen to them like they didn't feel it uh, they didn't see that happening they're like if god is there why he didn't do it to me and there is i believe in some time it's one of the reasons to yeah sure sure no i get that so uh, if it hasn't been your experience then you kind of struggle to walk in it to accept it so yeah that makes sense sure 
So that is another reason. Any anything else from your own side? As I think about it, uh, sometimes I think for for me it's when you've prayed about something for a while and then it doesn't happen. Uh, the supernatural doesn't manifest itself. Then it's but natural to wonder why why didn't it happen? And, you know, I believed in it and it, it didn't come through. But the way I look at it, or I have learned uh, in my journey, is that the standard of God's word doesn't change, and the will of God doesn't change about a matter whether uh, I have seen its manifestation or not. Right now, why? Didn't I see its manifestation? There can be so many reasons to answer that question. But definitely, you know, one of the uh, points is not that you know that truth has changed. God doesn't change. He has never changed you know, throughout uh, Scripture, throughout the ages. He remains the same. If He has spoken and said, "I'm Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you," He has never taken it back. So. That is who he is, and that is what he does. So uh, I just learned to walk in it. So I think sometimes it's uh, maybe discouragement that you find it hard to believe in the supernatural. Okay. So anyone else? Any of your thoughts? Ma'am, may I? Sure, sure, sir. Ma'am, actually, I am not talking about like the Western perspective, but from the in Indian perspective, according to my learning, what I have seen and witnessed, like we being Christians, we believe in all the supernatural things. Like Jesus came, He died for us. That all we believe. But the other another thing is that another aspect of the coin of the Indian civilization is that they already have their own super supernatural things. So when we go out and tell them like Jesus loves you. This they will say we are already having 32 crore gods with us. They are also loving us. How Jesus is different? We will tell them Jesus died for us. So they, we will like one of my friend. We I, I was having a, a kind of a talk with him. I told brother Jesus loves you. He said no. I don't want. I don't, like he was telling me Christianity is a religion. I told him no. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. He told me he was giving me some of the examples. Then I thought like he is also right as his thing. What was his point? He was telling me that. Jesus, I see Jesus. He was just as a man. He was as a prophet. But for me, like you are also having supernatural things. I believe that. Like the thing is that in what was the incident? Yeah, we see as the Red Sea was divided in the Bible. The Red Sea was divided. That was a supernatural thing. And we believe that God, God gave Moses that stuff. He praised God that that in that scenario. And Red Sea was divided. Similarly, they was telling me. You were telling the Red Sea was divided in our Hindu text. Also, there are some equal thing when Yamuna River was divided. Lord Krishna need to cross the road. That that time also the rivers were divided. So the thing is that what I am trying to say, the people they are not able to believe the supernatural things because they already have their own supernatural things. And when we go to them and we explain them like this is all the things Jesus loves you. This this and that. They tell, they tell, no, sorry, we don't need that. We are already having thing. Your God is a foreign God. We are not able to accept it. Ma'am, this is my point of view. Okay, sure. Uh, you know, I get your uh, view. So you're saying that uh, people have their own, um, you know, just... People have their own beliefs and their experiences of the supernatural, and they don't feel that there is a need for you know any other form of the supernatural. But as uh, John shared earlier, I think you know many such supernatural manifestations can uh, exist, but then we must keep going forward with what God wants to do. And uh, uh, when people will encounter the power of God, you know, they will know for themselves, isn't it? So pray for them and uh, just continue to minister the supernatural. And uh, also, you could pray that you know they they will encounter God through all of this, whatever we've been talking about. If it happens in their own experience, uh, it, it'll it'll be a different 
statement coming from them right so uh, is that okay sitkenu yes ma'am thank you ma'am sure so yeah thank you everyone for answering these questions so we are just getting warmed up to talk more about the supernatural so think on these things why is a supernatural important what are the arguments that people have even in the christian circles for um, not wanting to accept the supernatural power of god in our times okay so very important uh, uh, questions you could ponder on it uh, we could begin the next class with a little bit more discussion time and then i'll move into the next chapter here okay so let's uh, pray and close for now uh, i would like to request any of our students to please pray okay any volunteers yes sir can you please go ahead Lord, thank you for this day. As you have given us, oh Lord, as we have learned about your supernatural things, Lord, all all the supernatural, Lord, about your word, Lord, whatever we have learned today, Lord, whatever Pastor Nancy Ma'am has, Lord, put the seed in our heart, Lord, in our mind, Lord, it should not be wasted, but it should be used for your kingdom expansion, Lord, and all glory be given to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Nancy. Lord, we thank you for all the students who are being learning in both the modes, more. Lord, in offline and online mode, Lord, from wherever part of which part of the country they are from, Lord, Lord, bless them and guard them, protect them, and provide them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Kenu. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you, everyone, for connecting on the call. Really excited about all the sessions to come. Uh, but for now, we will close off. God bless you. Uh, please do look up the uh, notes. Uh, right, which will be posted for now. I posted the APC publication, Ministry Healing and Deliverance. So if you look it up, more notes will be posted for the subsequent sessions. Okay, so bye. God bless. See you. See you next week. Thank you. Thank you.